What up everyone? In this video, I want to talk about different ways to trade supply and demand and being able to adapt to the current conditions and environment in the market. It's going to be interesting because this is going to show you how supply and demand zones could be used as areas that we look trade at on the chart. I'm going to get into this and then we're going to get into some real examples going over the chart. Before we get into it though, if you haven't already, I recommend following me on Instagram at Investitrade. I'm going to link it in the description below to follow it. On here, I post daily trading recaps along with very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you're not going to find anywhere else. The link is in the description below. It's a good resource and you're missing out if you're not following it. But now let's get right into the lesson. Whether you're new here, or you've been following me for a while, you all know that I trade off of supply and demand price imbalances. It's the core to my strategy of price and volume. And what this looks like on the chart is green boxes for demand imbalances and pink boxes for supply imbalances. Now the market, just like any other market, car market, housing market, stock market, price moves up or down because of supply and demand. Now these price imbalances, a supply imbalance forms because supply once exceeded demand at the origin of the imbalance and demand once exceeded supply, which forms a demand imbalance. So the idea here is to draw up the zones once they form and wait for the market to come back and retest that. The reason why they form is because the market essentially moves based off of value, whether to see which participants feel value is fair or if it's unfair. What I mean by this is if you're looking to buy a car and the normal price of the car used to be 20000 but right now it's 25000 that is an unfair price. And as a participant in the car market, what are you going to do? Are you going to buy the car right now for 25000 or are you going to wait for the value to come back to fair value where it was, let's just say, two months ago at 20000 It's the same thing with the market. And usually these imbalances claim to be unfair value, which is what formed the imbalance to begin with. And when the market comes back to test that imbalance, you want the same participants or just the participants in general, buyers or sellers, to give us clues of what they feel like price is doing here, whether they feel like it's fair or whether they feel like it's unfair. That's going to make sense in a couple seconds here. So usually I said unfair causes an imbalance, responsiveness, and fair usually causes the market to be balanced. These conditions right here, you got to trade differently in an imbalanced market than you would in a balanced market. They're two different environments, two different conditions. And you all know that I stress this a lot about different conditions. You have to trade a little differently. It's what I tell investor trade members every single day. So demand imbalances, areas to look to take the market long. Supply imbalances are areas to take the market short. This helps gauge the auction in the market and properly develops new context. So demand imbalances, or we'll just maximize this. Supply imbalances, which we rejected overnight, um, are areas that we look to take the market short. This was once an area that sellers were presently active. So if the market comes back to the area of supply, you want the same sellers that were there at, let's just call it 4,350, you want those same sellers to defend that area and show the same amount of responsiveness in the auction to reject price there and bring us lower. And this is where us as traders can develop a plan and take a solid trade with low risk and very high probability. Same thing on the downside. We want demand zones. I could show you, you know, a hundred different examples. Let's just say the one at the bottom, because these two zones up here are going to be key with this video. But demand, we look to take the market long as long as there's buying confirmation. This is where we want buyers to defend and act like there is a wall of buy orders down there every time the market comes down. And this is where we can look to take the market long. So it essentially gives us new context. It helps us gauge the auction of participants because we develop this information and we use that information to come up with quality trading plans. So reading the auction and developing this context I'm talking about is super, super key. Context is king. Investor trade members know this all the time. I have a huge section in the course about context. It's very, very important. A contextual trader can survive in any market because the different conditions, different trading environments bring new context and new market themes. A lot of traders are so fixated to when this happens, the result is going to be this. 
or when I see this, this is going to happen 100%. Different conditions bring different environments and different environments you have to trade differently because the context is going to be different and new market themes with participants. Right now, if you want to compare it to the real estate market, everyone is looking to buy a house and homes are going for top dollar, 20, 30% over asking price. This is different from what we saw, let's just say 10 years ago or even five years ago. There wasn't this craze for houses where prices are going so higher than normal market value that we saw you know, prior to COVID. So these different conditions bring different environments and it brings different participants in the market. No participant's gonna be the same. Volatility helps decide that. Price helps decide that. This all also applies to the stock market and any single trading strategy you use. For example, I wanna go over the pre-market plan just to get context. I post these every single day in the Discord. The first one was on SPY today, a chart the future, the S&P 500, ES. We had demand lower at 4319. 4309 and 4299 that they must hold to remain bullish. If we test this demand and show no signs of buying, I'm less likely to be bullish. So what that means right there is I want to see how the participants react to the demand zones lower. If the participants are showing responsive signs of buying at demand, then we can look to take the market long, which is why with supply and demand, you always need confirmation. You cannot just blindly buy at a demand zone or blindly sell at a supply zone. You need more information and you need more context than that. We had an upside plan as well. However, I said I need to see above 4351 in the first hour and a half today. If that's the case, I'm going to be focusing on longs, but we were rejecting the 4347 supply zone that below it, we had to remain somewhat bearish. So we hit it overnight. This gave a nice opportunity to play a bearish position overnight. And we bounced at this demand zone overnight as well. So we have participants factored into the market. And this is what I mean about gauging the auction of the market. So let me pull this up over here. I was watching first this demand zone at 4319 to hold. I even put in the discord, uh, we have demand here. I'm watching it to hold. It's counter trend. Weak context are the current conditions. And I said, it's not too convincing to me. I'm most likely going to void it because of the context that the market spit out at me. I said, we hit demand and we just hang out, which tells me buyers really aren't showing effort to bring us to higher prices. If we don't have effort from buyers, how do I expect prices to move higher? It's a telltale sign. And I said, it helped me to play or helped me avoid playing calls at that demand zone. Imbalances are just areas I'm interested in trading at. The key is context and the reaction at that zone to gauge the auction. I see a lot of traders see a green box. They think they have to get long right away, or they see a supply zone and they think they mean to get short. It's partially true, but you always need to put the pieces together to fit the puzzle. When there are missing pieces and you can't read the puzzle, then you don't have a valid trade and it's less likely to work out. So what I meant by this is the market sold off in the morning. We had the weak context of the supply zone rejecting. And I also want to go over what the common middle term theme is in the market, right? We made a high around 45.50. And in the past month of full month of September, we've been seeing some pretty bearish action where the market's putting in lower lows. It's putting in lower highs. Dips really aren't getting bought and the rallies are being sold into. So that's another telltale sign of weakness. And demand zones have been less reliable because of aggressive sellers in the market and very weak buyers. So this is what I mean about putting all the pieces together. We are putting in lower lows, lower highs, and you have to trade differently in those conditions. Now, picture in, you know, since May, all the way up till late, late August, all these demand zones in this area that we had for the whole month of September, they've been providing minor bounces but have been getting sold into because of how weak those buyers are. So what you have to do as a, as a trader is to objectively um, be ready to adjust, adjust to the current conditions. And instead of using demand right now as an area to look to play long, demand still bounces. There are some still clean moves off of it. But on days like today where the context, you know, you could have seen it in the first 20 minutes of the market open, how weak it was and how aggressive the sellers were. 
You have to avoid playing or being a first buyer at demand. Personally, I let it bounce and then maybe we could get in once buyers really prove themselves. Uh, but we hit this demand zone and because of what I said in the Discord about you know me avoiding this demand zone, it helped me take a big loss because normally where the uptrend conditions are in place, buyers are pretty strong, I would have longed this demand zone. But it helped me avoid it and where you could flip like a switch and trade differently to the current context is instead of playing calls at demand, maybe look to play puts once I get this context that sellers are stronger than buyers at this demand zone because we have a higher probability of the market moving lower as we slice through this demand zone. Like I just said, that indicates sellers are stronger than buyers. And when that happens at a demand zone, that's very weak context. You add on the 2 million lots traded today, compared to a daily average of 1.5 million, very heavy selling. You could definitely capitalize on puts below demand, at demand, just do not chase an overextended move. I get questions like this all the time. You know, if we get below demand, can you short it? Yes, but make sure it's not extended. Maybe try to get in on a failed rally like we saw, you know, up here, up here, maybe here, you know, don't just buy on the way down where your risk to reward is skewed. Get in an area where your confirmation signal triggers and then play it short. Now, that's just currently as I'm recording this video. Tomorrow, the theme could change. Next week, the theme could change. And I'm not against longing off demand. I'll play it off demand every single day if I wanted to. But just understand the context. Understand its counter trend. Understand play with maybe you know different size. Maybe it's a lower probability. And as soon as the market adjusts that buyers are showing up at demand, then those become higher probability of setups. But right now, sellers are very aggressive and buyers really aren't showing effort. Same thing on NQ. I posted this in the pre-market plan as well. Pull this up here. I said NQ, QQ levels for today, tons of supply overhead, and really gonna gauge the next component to the market auction. Supply is above, all are valid if sellers are present during its context. I'll become bullish only if we could create demand above 14850, and we had demand a little lower as well. But just like the S&P, lower lows, lower highs, some very heavy selling pressure, some nice volume, sellers are aggressive, buyers are pretty weak, that's the context. So demand is gonna be less reliable. Pull this up here, go to one minute chart. Market opened up, we rejected supply overnight, selling off, hit this demand zone, we showed no signs of buying. So what that tells me is buyers are not buying, they're weak, and sellers are still putting the pressure on, considering very heavy volume, 793 lots, compared to a daily average of 536. The next demand zone we tested broke right below it like it wasn't even there. So key points I'm trying to make here is when demand is not showing signs of buying, it's a sign of weakness from that participant of that side. And when supply is not showing a sign of selling, then it's saying sellers are really not putting that same responsiveness at that imbalance and buyers maybe are aggressive, but price and volume will tell you the story. It's just another way to add some tools to your arsenal. Don't think that just because we have demand, you look to play the market long. Don't think that just because we have supply, you look to take the market short. Use these as areas to gauge the auction because the auction and context give you that development you need to make a trading plan. Look at these as bus stops. You're driving a bus. You come to a bus stop. If you see nobody at the bus stop, you're just going to keep moving and looking for another trade. If you see people at that bus stop, there's obviously interest there. And, you know, in the market, that's where you could get your nice high quality trade. But just use these to gauge the auction, develop context, as it's very, very, very powerful. When we see this volatility like this, you have to change and not be so complacent where we were. Go back to this chart. Um, you know, ever since COVID where we had a strong uptrend. Durban from COVID to September. This is just a new theme. From COVID to September, dips into demand have been getting bought up and moves into supply. You're just using areas to take profits. The market pulls back slightly before continuing higher. So understand the context, gauge it, and you have a very, very powerful tool. This is exactly what I mean about adapting to the current conditions and seeing what the current theme of the market is. As I recorded that little segment you just saw on Monday with the market sell-off, 
on that day, just like this. Look what happened. The following day, we had a strong rally. All of those supply zones that formed the day prior, buyers stepped through. So now we have buying context up here at the highs. The market pulls back. Look where we pull right back into. That seam, let me remove the trend line. That same exact demand zone that we bounced at on Monday at the low, that we bounced at on Sunday night or on uh, Friday morning, come back into it. We test it. The same exact thing, the same supply sellers from Monday, the ones overnight on Tuesday into Wednesday, strong buying on, on Wednesday, create new demand zones, invalidate supply. If we go to a one minute chart, you're going to see. Now that the theme has changed, supply worked. If I remove this thing, uh, let me remove the green line. If we had this supply zone, which we did, this actually was an area I took the market short on uh, Wednesday. Play puts, spy puts off of the supply zone, right? So just because you see supply, you see demand, you don't have to freak out and think the market's going to you know, do something there. You have to see if the participants are waiting at the bus stop. If the participants are waiting at the bus stop. That's when you know you have interest and that's when you could put a quality to trade on. But now we have the context that buyers are factored in because the market did rally. We rallied into overnight. Let me move this back here, go like this. And now we have all these demand zones bounced at that zone and we opened up. And on Thursday, I took another trade. I actually played calls inside of supply for a couple of reasons. So the market opened up. We had that context of buyers stepping in. Notice how different this is compared to what I was thinking and what I was feeling on Monday when I recorded that segment you just saw earlier in the video. See how it's very important to change your mind and do what the market tells you intraday and with ever, whatever the context it's spitting out at you. We opened up, we had a strong rally through supply indicating very strong buyers, weak sellers. We pulled back at 951, I took spy calls, played the 441 calls when it looked like this. I was speculating that new demand was going to form inside of supply. My risk was at the low. It was a very low risk, high reward, because by the end, I was targeting this 4424 supply zone. And then we got that quick push above the high, and I got out my full position for a quick scalp because I am actually longing inside of supply. It's not very high quality to me, although you can find a nice setup on it. Just adjust your size accordingly and do what the market tells you. And then all afternoon, FOMO hours were active and now selling off going into the close. So conditions change like seasons, adapt to them, use different tools in your arsenal, understand these are just areas I'm interested in trading at, as long as there's other participant interest at those levels. So I think I'm gonna end you all on that note. If you enjoyed this video, drop a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't already, check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course that will come with access to the Discord at no extra cost, and it will alleviate all of the noise that I see on a lot of other traders' charts. But besides that, I'm ending it. Peace out.